Hello everyone. So I'm going to wait and see how long it takes until people join. Okay, I see we already have six people, seven, let's wait a little longer, a couple of minutes. In the meantime, you can, uh, if you have a computer, it would be very good that you sit at your computer uh, so you can Google things, I say, or write down notes, maybe have a piece of paper ready. Um, if you don't hear me well, please tell me, I'll fix that. If you don't see me well, anything like that. Um, and we'll just wait a few more minutes and let people join us. So you can grab a cup of coffee in the meantime or something like that. Still at seven. Okay, what time is it? It's two. I'll give it another. I'll give it another two minutes. So, if you want, you can go quickly to the bathroom, or if you have questions that you want to ask, you can already put them in the chat, and then I can already have a look and prepare myself as well. I need a pen. Where's my pen? Hang on. Can you hear me still? Is everything okay? Hey, hey, one, two, three, should work. Please let me know if you don't hear me or if anything is wrong. Okay, up to nine people now. The reason I keep looking up is I have another screen, which I recommend when you do a live stream to have. Um, maybe don't put it up there like I did. Put it down here where you could look at it, but for technical reasons right now, I'll do it like that. Uh, yes, the average attention span of the viewers will definitely get to that. Uh, it's very short, as you can imagine, and that is why it's super important to interact with people. I'll give another minute or two before I start doing that, um, Orlando, and just kind of let people join us. I see now we're getting into numbers. Perfect. 14. Hey, hey. Hi, Nicholas. Great. Hey, guys. Hey, Judith. Hey, Regina, or Regina, sorry if I uh, mispronounce anybody's names. Uh, let's see, should we wait one more minute? What do you say? Eleven people right now. That means we're losing people. So maybe I'll just start. Or it's up to fourteen. Okay, I think I'll just start, um, and then we see. And you guys, let me know if something is the matter. So my name is Ranir. I, you can see it on my little Ranir TV here. And I'm doing this for Music Pool Berlin, who are supported by the European Union, which is cool. We set up this little thing for you. Um, I'm going to explain how I did this and how you could do that. And I'm going to basically go through four uh, main topics. I'll try to do it very fast because we don't have a lot of time. And I want to try and give five minutes per topic. So my topics are basically one is technical. So that's just basically how you do it, what kind of softwares we have, and what's the technical part of it. I won't get too technical because each software has its own, you know, different things you have to know about and uh, so I won't do that. 
but I will let you know about the softwares and how you could find out more. And I'll give you the basics, which is pretty much the same for all softwares. Um, then I'll, we'll talk a little bit about uh, what options we have. So uh, where do we go live and what's the difference between those places? Uh, then I'll talk about promotion. Um, a little bit how you should do it before, after, during, and at the end, a little bit of marketing and how you could monetize and possibly make some money, hopefully, uh, during this time. So um, for each of these topics, I'm going to try and do five minutes. Uh, please let me know if I'm going way off. Uh, my friends here at Music Pool Berlin, uh, if, if I'm way off, if I'm taking too much time, just let me know. I'll try to keep looking up uh, to see what you guys are writing. So please, if I'm going up a lot, uh, just know that that's why I'm looking up. Um, so I'll try to do five minutes each time. And then because you know the topic, so like I said, technical, um, then where, and then promotion and marketing, um, you can ask questions regarding these topics as we go along. So while I'm talking, you can already ask your questions. That way I could either answer while we're doing this um, or at the end of the five minutes, just before I move to the next part. Hopefully we could get enough. And then at the end, of course, Q&A, just shoot any questions you still have after that and we'll just have a conversation, basically. Um, so let's just start. All right. Uh, so hello everyone. If you joined us just now, uh, just uh, to say again, I have a screen up here that I will be looking at a bunch of the times to uh, look at things that I'm doing as well as um, just your comments and what you're talking to me about. So uh, we're going to start with uh, how do we do this? How do we live stream from home? So as you can see right now, I'm talking to you through this mic and I've got this little uh, thing going up uh, over here. Uh, the way I'm broadcasting to you is through a, a software, uh, basically what we call an open broadcasting software or open broadcaster software, an OBS. Um, there are many types of OBS. Um, uh, the one I'm using right now is called Streamlabs, Streamlabs OBS. Uh, the most common one or the one that I think most people use is simply called OBS. It has a little logo that kind of looks like a, like a cross a little bit. Um, it's very, very easy to find. If you Google OBS, it will probably be the first result you get. It's because it's an open source one and it's a free one. You could use it on your PC or your Mac. Um, and it's very, very uh, user friendly. So is this one, uh, uh, Streamlabs that I'm using right now. They basically look the same. They basically have the same um, uh, properties built into them. So you could do the same things. What are these properties, first of all? Um, well, the ability to stream into the different uh, different uh, live uh, platforms that we have today, which I will get to, uh, which which platforms those are. Um, but also, it gives you the ability to, of course, change uh, the sound, change the audio, the video, uh, add stuff like these little titles or filters or uh, your screen. You can share your screen. You can do all those things that you probably already know a little bit from softwares like Zoom or Skype, but in a bit more, um, uh, um, how do you say, uh, advanced way. This is because those softwares were originally built for uh, gamers and the way that they, you know, uh, video games, basically video them themselves playing the games and then talking about it so they can split the screen, they can show it, they can replay and all that stuff. You could do all that within your OBS. Uh, if I'm talking too fast, tell me, but it's for the sake of making a lot of, uh, uh, a lot in a little time. All right. So, uh, so that's one way, the OBS. You can download them, like I said, uh, they're free, uh, these two versions that I just spoke of, which is Streamlabs and OBS. Uh, those two are free. Uh, they both work, as far as I know, on PC and Mac. Sometimes they work better on one rather than the other. Uh, these are, you know, simple bugs and stuff like that. A simple restart would normally do the job uh, of fixing that. Um, for me, so far, it was really good. Um, so uh, the other option you have is an online option I found recently, which is called Lola TV. Uh, but I don't think that's the preferred way for two reasons. One, it's not really free. You can only get 180 minutes uh, a month free, which is good. But maybe you want to do something uh, more often or maybe you want to do longer things and therefore it's not enough for you. 
Um, and then, of course, then it's it's uh, it's paid if you go over that. Uh, what is good about that online platform, Lola TV, L O L A T V, um, is that it allows you to connect to all your different platforms. So that was five minutes on just just on the basic uh, of the platforms. Okay, I will increase the volume a little bit. Yes, of course, no problem. Let's do it right there. Please let me know if that's too much or if I'm like uh, distorting or whatever. Um, okay, so I'll just touch uh, very, very quickly on how you broadcast once you have the software technically, and then we'll move on to the next part. Um, okay, so once you've downloaded it, basically you just open it on your computer. You'll get a little uh, window. This is I'm going to show you what Streamlabs look like, but again, they all look pretty much the same. Um, so let's see here. Uh, okay, hang on. Okay, so this is it. Is this it? <laughs> Sorry, I got a lot of things going on here. Okay, here it is. So this is the screen, right? Um, just so you can see, I'm underneath it. So I'll just try to make it a little smaller here and put it like on the side here. So let me know if this is too small and you can't see anything. Um, if it's too small, then I'll uh, try to make it bigger. You won't see me for a second, but I'll try to explain. So the uh, the system has all these features. Basically, uh, I won't go too much into it, but you have the mixer where you can control the audio. And basically, right in the middle, you have this window that tells you all the different sources you're, you ha you're using, like video, audio, and then all the different filters and text you might be using, like I'm using right now, with the music pool and just basically everything you see is, a fi is one source that I'm putting in. Um, so once you have that, you'll, ha you'll go to your settings, on the left side, there's a little, um, you know, those regular wheels uh, uh, that show you the setting on the left side of the screen. So that would be right, <laughs> wait, let's see, right there, actually, at the corner. Um, and then you are looking for uh, the stream uh, tab. And on the stream tab, you will have a thing called uh, stream key. Now. Why this is important? Because the stream key is how you broadcast through a broadcasting system to the rest of um, to the rest of the um, uh, different networks. So via YouTube, uh, Facebook, um, maybe you go on Instagram, maybe you go on Twitch, maybe you go on Zoom. I'll explain the differences as well in a second. But you need the stream key to get in contact, basically, with the other. Uh, software or the other broadcasting technique you're going through. Um, so this stream key basically, um, once you go into a live broadcast, it will give you an option to look for a stream key or to go through your camera. Once you go to a stream key, it gives you basically a number and an option to copy it. You put that copy, paste it on the stream key in the, in the OBS that you're using, and that's it. You just go live, and once you go live from the OBS, you will see yourself on your Facebook, YouTube, whatever it is, okay? If this is too complicated to understand within these five minutes, you can find very, very easy uh, YouTube uh, tutorials, really two minutes long, that just tell you how to find your stream key. Um, super easy, really, really, really uh, not a problem to do. So, um, I'll, I'll touch on the few questions you've asked me and then I'll move to the next part. Um, so, uh, let's start with the first question I saw here. Uh, do you know about problems with licensing when playing on music or on music video? Okay, so this one's from Orlando. Uh, basically, when you broadcast your own stuff, while you're broadcasting it live, I imagine you wouldn't get any problems uh, because the software that's uh, monitoring, let's say it's Facebook or YouTube, they're monitoring your, your broadcast basically after, normally after you've uploaded it. Um, if you do a live and you don't even let it stay, you shouldn't have a problem. It will disappear automatically. Um, if you leave it up there, uh, that could cause problems. But if it's your own stuff, if you're playing your own music, for example, showing your own video, you shouldn't have a problem. To avoid problems, you can always uh, contact your distributor 
uh, your label or your distributor, or whoever is in charge of your uh, rights in the digital world, and basically send them the link and say, hey, this is me doing my own thing. Please make sure they don't flag it. Please make sure they don't take it down. Uh, normally, they won't. Even if they would do something, they'll just mute something. And then they'll give you the option to, uh, to basically say, hey, uh, you muted me. I, I own the rights. Please put it back. So I hope that uh, answers your question. Um, then the next question I saw, any thoughts on Zoom? So I will get right to uh, in my next part right now about uh, the different uh, platforms and how you could or could not do with it. So I'll, I'll, I will answer your question, Don, in a minute. Um, is this video going to stay online? I don't know. Uh, the Music Ber Berlin, Music Pool Berlin people will say yes. Okay, so it will stay online. Um, what if I invite another musician? Uh, what, do you, uh, what do you actually mean, Orlando? Do you mean if you invite someone to do it with you from another place? Uh, in that, in that uh, if you're trying to do something like that, then um, this is not really the way to go. Probably you'll have to go with Zoom, like uh, you said. I'll get to that right now. Let me talk about the different options, and then um, we, we try to touch on all those different options. There are obviously a lot, and they're changing, and they're being added all the time. So bear with me. Okay, so the different options, right? The, dif the different options you have are basically, as we know them today, or the most popular ones are Facebook, where you can go on Facebook Live, which is what we're doing right now, um, a YouTube Live, um, you have Twitch, which is basically a platform that was made for gamers and gaming, but is now getting, gaining a lot of popularity through musicians because it already has all the uh, ways to um, basically stream and also monetize or make money basically by tip jars, virtual tip jars, and so on. So it's a favorite of people. Of course, you can go on Instagram, um, but uh, the format of Instagram, I think, is not the best one to go with uh, for live broadcasting. Uh, you could always upload things to Instagram later on IGTV or something like that. But to go live, I would use probably one of the more um, you know, proper displays type of thing where people are probably also listening maybe at home on their computer with better speakers where you want to get the best results, right? Um, so these are the, um, the main options. Um, now, regarding Zoom, Zoom is a great option for t two reasons. One I will touch later, which is the money-making uh, reason, which because you could uh, basically have people pay to join your Zoom and then send them a Zoom link, and then only the people with the Zoom link obviously could use it. So that's one uh, good thing about Zoom. Um, the other thing, of course, is that people can interact with you. So right now I'm talking to you guys, but I can't see you. Uh, I don't know how you're reacting when there is a Zoom. Maybe it's more fun. You play a show. You can see all the crowd in front of you. They're all muted. They don't bother you, but maybe they put up signs or something like that. Um, for example, I just saw a festival, an online video Zoom festival that they did in Israel where they did just that, and they even had people editing live and switching from the different cameras, which is great uh, if you have people, of course, helping you. This one's more focused on how to do one thing alone from your own house, so I wouldn't go too much about collaborations in terms of like how you could broadcast through multiple broadcasters and so on. I think it's more, a little more complicated, uh, and I just want to get to the point where people can just you know do it on their own. Of course, later, you could do that in Zoom and stuff like that, it creates problems of uh, sync and delay and different connections. So basically, it's not recommended. I haven't seen anybody doing that live that worked. Um, so either go uh, in the same room if you can, if it's allowed, um, or uh, yeah, or, or don't do it live. Just do it recorded and then upload it later. Um, for live at the moment, I think this is the best we could do. Um, so, uh, one more thing about Zoom that I want to say. Um, at the moment, OBS, so if you didn't listen to me in the beginning, OBS is an uh, open broadcast software which is allowing you to uh, broadcast live, which is exactly what I'm using right now. I'm using Streamlabs. Um, OBS at the moment to Zoom, the connection through the stream key that I was referring to, is available on PC with like an EXE file you can download, open it up, it will give you a thing called a virtual camera, and then you go on your Zoom to your camera and you choose virtual camera and it will open up the connection to your OBS. And then you could do that and you can do all the things that I'm doing right now 
like those little uh, th frames or the manipulation of audio, video, whatever. Um, however, for Mac at this specific moment in time, um, is it's not available. You don't have a DMG file where you can just open. You could, if you're tech savvy, you could basically uh, go on your terminal and put in a code and build a plugin. I'm not gonna explain how to do it. It's there on Google. You can Google it, uh, how to connect OBS to Zoom on Mac. It will send you to a forum that explains the code and basically you could do it there. Um, a little more complicated, so for that, I wouldn't necessarily use this. Now, why to use OBS and not Zoom? Uh, basically, right now, for example, I'm using one mic. So if you're only using one mic, let's say it's a condenser mic and not a dynamic mic, this is a, dyna a dynamic mic. Um, a condenser mic looks like this. I don't know if I could show it actually because it's too far, sorry, I can't. But a condenser mic is normally, um, it's basically just allows you to record the room. So um, if you would do a live uh, performance from your house, you should probably use a condenser and not a dynamic. So you can catch your guitar or your drums or whatever it is that you're playing and just uh, have a better uh, sound. Um, the thing with an OBS that allows you to connect to your sound card, basically, um, and if you're like a musician at home and you have a small mixing desk, perhaps, you can connect that to your uh, sound uh, card and then basically have a little mix happening on your desk like let's say a guitar and a vocal and maybe another friend playing a, an electric guitar or just like an uh, electronic device, whatever. It's like a computer with Ableton or it's a SPD drummer or whatever. Um, and then you can mix that first and send that in, which will work a little better. And you can also open different channels on your own mixer for the OBS and control them. So you could control the different levels for each instrument, for example. So that's why the OBSs are a little better than just going on Zoom. And again, if you go on Zoom on PC, you could connect your OBS. And on Mac, probably very soon, they'll, they'll have an option for that. For now, it's just by code. Um, so um, which streaming platform do you think gives the best audio and video quality? Instagram seems to have a sound limiter, for example. Do you know anything about that? OK, thank you, Antonio, for the question. Yes, like I have said, I've also mentioned Instagram is definitely not the best one. Instagram was not built for this kind of lives, um, and definitely not sound-wise, also video-wise, I don't think. Uh, the, you know, just the screen being smaller is not so comfortable, I think. Um, in terms of uh, different uh, platforms, Twitch, uh, because they're working on it for such a long time, actually works really good. Uh, so that's one thing that I would definitely try. Um, I think Facebook works. I think Facebook works as long as you have a good connection. Um, I, I've done I've done one so far on Facebook that really worked well. I used it with one mic. It was a condenser. I put a reverb uh, pedal, connected it to the condenser, and just had a nice reverb on me and played an acoustic show. Um, again, if you're trying to do something better with sound, you can always have a mixer and connect the mixer th to that, and then you have the option to have outboard. Also on OBS, you have the option to have uh, plugins. VST plugins. So um, on uh, on Streamlabs uh, for Mac, I had a little bit of problems trying that. Maybe they fix it already. On OBS, I know it works. Again, it could cause problems with your CPU. It depends how powerful your computer is. I'm sorry if I'm talking in a little bit of technicals again, but it, uh, it relates to the question for audio. So a lot of the times it doesn't necessarily have to do uh, with the platform, but more like... Um, what broadcasting you have, what internet quality you have. Those two affect things much more. So if your internet quality is, is not so good, which I think mine, for example, is not the best, uh, that will obviously affect your sound and your video. Um, you can, oh, by the way, also uh, for video, you know, you, if you have a good camera, you can connect an, a camera to your OBS as well and get a better uh, view. Right now I'm, I'm broadcasting from my computer, but you could have, a, I don't know, a Canon or a Sony camera connected. You'll just need the specific cable that uh, connects a computer with a USB to a camera, but that's it. And then you can use also a camera. Um, so just to be clear, you can go, the question here is, uh, you can go via your DAW into OBS. Yes, that's correct, Ben. Exactly. Uh, you can go, uh, that's, uh, I mean, oh, you're talking about a DAW. Okay. 
So no, no, <laughs> sorry, no. If you want to go through your Pro Tools and put plugins on your Pro Tools and then send that to the OBS, that might be a problem. But on your OBS, on actual OBS or Streamlabs, you have a thing called Filter, and you can put it on your um, audio uh, input. So basically, if you open an audio input for your vocal, for example, and you want to put some reverb on it, and you have VST plugins that you would use anyways on your DAW, you can open these VST plugins just as you would on Pro Tools or Ableton or Logic or whatever software you're, you're using um, in your OBS. And then you will get the same window, the same controller you would get on your D, uh, DAW, DAW, and basically uh, you can control the reverb from there or the compressor or whatever. Uh, some OBS already come with built-in effects. Normally it's a compressor and an EQ, stuff like that, which is more for gaming. Um, but again, as this develops and... Uh, any OBS that allows you VST basically allows you to put uh, VSTs that you uh, um, might use on any uh, DAW. So I hope that answers your question. Um, okay. All right. So I'll try to move on. I see we're 24 minutes in. Um, if you guys have more questions about this, I'll try to answer at the end. Um, so I've touched uh, already now also on the, which platforms you have. In case you don't know how to use their pla these platforms, they're very, very easy, and you can uh, basically Google it. It's, like, it's super, super chilled. Uh, Facebook, you go, you, you have the live option from any uh, post you want to make, from any page or any, um, you know, if you have a page or if you have a profile, you always can go live. And then it sends you to their new uh, live uh, producer window, which I'm using right now. And it gives you the options, use stream key, use camera. Basically, if you use an OBS, you use the stream key. Uh, if you don't want to use an OBS, you can use camera normally. Uh, this applies to uh, YouTube. On YouTube, you just go to um, where it says create, where you normally would upload a video. And w once you press create, it gives you go live. And then again, sends you to a producer window and so on. This applies to um, Facebook and YouTube. For Twitch, you have to open an account. It's free. You open your account, and once you open your account, um, basically then you set up all your you know, logo, picture, whatever, and you can go live again uh, with an OBS to Twitch. Um, I will say um, that regarding uh, now moving on to promotion, um, when you're using any of the platforms, you want to have crowds. Uh, watching you. So if you want to have a crowd, that means you have to work it probably for for a time being. So right now, if you just open for the first time Twitch, you don't have any followers, you probably won't get so many people watching you in the beginning. But you should definitely do it. You should leave your videos on uh, online if they look good, obviously, um, so that you can promote them later via your social uh, media networks. And just to have it there when people browse and they can find you and uh, by looking at tags of music or whatever or your name if they know you um, and they can find the different um, and you can find the different um, uh, content basically on, on Twitch, on YouTube, on Facebook, etc. Uh, I find that it's good to leave the, the stuff there for people also to see later. People might be, you know, watching you right now thinking, oh, this is great, but uh, the baby's crying or I got to go somewhere uh, and they want to come back to it later. So it's great. It collects views. It's great for you. And if you do all kinds of promotional stuff, which we're getting to right now, then of course it also helps you promote your own page and then the next time you'll get more viewers and the next time so on so on exponentially so it is a very good thing to do um, when working with an OBS which is how I recommend you guys should work you can do these little things like I did here um, you can always um, put on different content like uh, for example uh, you want your Instagram page to appear then you put your Instagram handle everybody can uh, see it while you play you can put it aside you can rearrange it you can make things uh, design graphic things on your own if you if you know how to do it or if you have a friend who's a designer and you can actually create really cool things um and put them um wherever you want basically on the window um so that's one thing um i'm going to uh, talk talk about promotion in three uh different levels um first of all is before the second is during and the third is after, okay? So 
Um, again, if you have questions about um, the, the ways or if you have questions about promotion, shoot me the questions right now and I'll try to answer during or at the end. Um, hi, Mike. Sorry, I'll just qu quickly answer to Mike. I can see that you're asking a technical question. I, unfortunately, we don't really have time to get into all these. Um, it's always best to not use uh, Wi-Fi or WLAN. Uh, when you're broadcasting, if you can use a cable connection to your router, it will be better, especially for for video. If you're trying to like stream something 4K, it's very heavy. You need to have a good connection. You need to have, I would say, for this kind of stuff, five mega upload. Uh, sorry, 10 mega upload and more. Uh, the more, the better. Uh, but again, I'm not going to go into specifics uh, on that stuff because it's just it's a whole it's going to take a long time or we're just trying to get people to be able to um, do at least the very least one-on-one -on -one thing here. I don't know, maybe we could do something more in the future, but for now. So thanks for, th for the question. I hope this helps you a little bit. Um, so back to promotion. So first step is before. Before, you should act as if you have a show because you're going to have a show. So you should do the same things you would have done uh, if you had a real live show out in a club. You should have an event for it. You should have uh, a banner for it. You should have, you know, um, promote it on your, on your social media, on Facebook, Instagram, everything. Uh, hi, this is Rani. I'm going to go live on blah, 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 blah. Uh, you can find it via wherever you guys are going to broadcast. Uh, you know, if you're going to upload it first on one place and then later to say it, I'm going to do it live on X date, then it will go on uh, my YouTube, my Facebook or whatever. Promote it like that. Push it uh, like a show, but don't be naggy about it. Like you wouldn't be naggy about a show. So it, you don't need to do it every five minutes or every day, but you should definitely want, do it once, let's say a couple of weeks before you're going to uh, go live. Maybe a week. That's also fine. People are right now, obviously, in this specific scenario, not, uh, you know, doing too much. Most people are at home. Even if we're going back to work right now, if you're going to do a show, you're probably going to do it in the evening. It's a better time for most people. I would say from five in the evening on, when people are pretty much done with the beginning of their day. Um, so that's the first thing uh, uh, you should do. Um, then, of course. It's very good if you could collaborate with people. So, for example, right now what we're doing is, you know, the music pool, I'm broadcasting through uh, their channel. Uh, you could have, like, different uh, connections to either different artists that you work with or your friends that you guys could, like, help each other and make, like, a little festival. So let's say you have four friends and they're all musicians. So you go live from all the four different um, channels. It's very easy once you have the the live link you just post it and all those channels and people can join you uh, after of course they can do a watch party and rewatch it again and again um so it's kind of like cross cross posting posting you can do it together uh, which allows you to reach more people you can do collaborations with maybe a club maybe a brand uh again it all depends on who you are and uh who are who are the um people that you might be in contact with. Obviously, if you're a little bigger, you might be able to get some branding to support you uh, and stuff like that. But uh, I'll get to that in the marketing part. But at least for, the, for promotion, you can get more people by doing that. Of course, use your friends. Tell them I'm going to go live. Please share when you go live. Please, uh, please share my link right now. All that stuff. And you can uh, share the link with, with all your friends. Um, so that's the first part is before. Uh, obviously, uh, one day before, you should remind people, and five minutes before you go online, you should remind people that it's happening because then they get a notification that says, okay, uh, the live's about to begin. When you do it, we're moving on now to, uh, to the present moment of, of doing the show. Obviously, when you start, you have to wait for people, okay? Um, so while you wait, it's good to have a little banner or something that says, hello, welcome. Uh, what I use is something like this normally. It says, welcome to my live stream. If you want to tip during the show, please feel free to do it on my, in my case, PayPal. I'll get to the different options later. At and then the different uh, PayPal uh, um, name you have. If you're using an email, it's an email. If you have my PayPal, then you're my PayPal. If it's Ranir at Gmail or if it's Ranir or whatever it might be. Um, 
or, or any other payment method that you're using. I'll get to that at the very end. Um, and have that on the screen, have maybe something cool like, uh, you know, like this thing, or maybe you want to, while people wait, put your album cover or something like that where you can use and you can open and close all the time through the OBS when you talk to people to say, oh, my album is out, it looks like this, uh, blah, 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 turn it off. So that's for during. Um, it's very, very important to engage with your crowd. So like I'm talking to you right now, um, I want you guys to ask me questions so I could um, call out your names basically and I can interact with you because... Uh, what people found, especially the gaming people actually, uh, who are experts at this by now, um, is that if you have a show, a one-hour show, for a one-hour show, you should have 30 minutes talking, okay? Um, so for every five minutes of song, you should have probably about five minutes of talking. Uh, that's because people have a very short attention span, like someone asked before, um, and they need you to interact. This is not a normal show. If you just sit and play, it's not so interesting. There's a one frame, it, even with all the little games I could use here, it's not so much. Uh, so it's good to interact with people and it's good to talk to people uh, to kind of figure out uh, what's happening. So uh, that's during. Uh, mention uh, every time you, like, let's say it's been 10, 15 minutes into the broadcast, try to mention things that happened or say, so far, like right now, in this broadcast, I've spoken about the different OBS, the different systems of broadcasting, different softwares of broadcasting, and I've talked about the different uh, live uh, options we have, like Facebook, YouTube, etc. and now I'm talking about promotion. If you want, you can go back and look at the other stuff I talked before. So that's why you're doing it. It's very important, obviously, uh, again, to support your... Uh, little way of payment if you have it, if it's PayPal or another one. Uh, some uh, options like Twitch give you an option to basically connect your PayPal already and then people can just tip uh, directly. They might have a thing like a tip jar. Um, a tip jar is now appearing up here. Um, and then when people tip, you can see the money fall in. It's a little cute thing that happens. Uh, again, only certain uh, websites will do this. You can't really do that uh, as of this moment on Facebook. Uh, but they did promise that they will have a payment option coming soon, so I expect that to happen. Um, for right now, they're giving you another option to make money, uh, which is, um, I'm slightly going into the marketing here, um, because promotion and marketing usually go hand in hand, um, which is to basically, once you have a certain amount of viewers, uh, right now I think it's more than 300, uh, then they would put a commercial on or something like that and you could basically monetize and get money from that. Uh, more like a YouTube video. YouTube has been doing this already for a while and now uh, Facebook is trying to give them uh, some competition and basically opening that up as well. Um, but on Twitch you can, get, uh, you can get paid. I know of a platform that is running in beta right now called Sessions and they have a cryptocurrency type of uh, payment. And again, I'm sure more and more are going to pop up as this thing happens and as maybe the industry changes a little bit and so on. Um, technology obviously uh, pops up like that. So stay tuned to kind of find out what things might come. Um, once you've done your show and you've promoted yourself, hopefully you got a little bit of money, uh, you got viewers watching you, you're, you're interacting with them. Once you've done all that, um, then, of course, you keep the video up. You keep the video up and then you also push it like the day after. Maybe you say, hey, last, uh, I went online last night, I played a show. If you want, you can watch it here or on my social media, whatever place you uploaded it. It's very important to mention and when you're using an OBS, you will be able to also record your entire um, broadcast for your own purposes, either to upload later or just to look at yourself. Maybe you didn't like the broadcast, you felt it was bad, you deleted it from, from uh, your Facebook or wherever you broadcasted, but then you want to learn how to get better, like you would watch your own show, like you record rehearsals maybe, um, which you should definitely do. Uh, then you can record this and actually see what was bad, how, how you could do it better, timing, sound, visual, everything. So you could uh, look at that. Um, 
So I'm going to move on to marketing. Before I do that, I'm going to answer uh, Regina's question here. What about interface and microphones? Could you show an in installation or recommend, uh, recommend other devices? So I touched on that a little bit um, already, but basically, um, again, it depends on uh, what, uh, what system you're using. If you're using an OBS that allows you to use different uh, channels, or maybe you have a sound card that has like five or six or 10 or 12 inputs, then you can have an input through the OBS for each of those things, and then basically just treat it like a studio. If you're miking a, a guitar, uh, an acoustic guitar, maybe you wanna mic it with a condenser or a DI or both. Um, if you're miking uh, uh, your vocals, and perhaps you want to use dynamic, if it's separate from the other stuff, uh, if you're miking drums, if you're having a computer, you might want to run it through uh, something else. So if you have a, a uh, sound card at home that has, that is in fact a mixer or has multiple inputs, then you could do that very easily and then you can have different mics. And then basically miking stays the same like you would mic a show. Uh, I use the same uh, the same hardware. Uh, when I sing, if I like my vocal on a 58, then I'll sing to a 58. If I like my vocals on my blue condenser, then I'll sing to a blue condenser. And it's just about mixing. If you're good at mixing and you can do it, and of course, like I said, you can record and hear it and test before you go live. Uh, first time I went live was only after I tested for two days straight the different options with connecting and disconnecting and recording just to see what what sound I get obviously to hear what it sounds like when it goes live through the um, the streaming service you're using obviously it downgrades a little bit the sound and the and the video and again uh, what whichever connection you have so um, so that's that's uh, the kind of interface I would use perfect perfect for somebody at home which again would be to use a, a good sound card if you have it if you're a musician you probably have one um, the more inputs you have, the better for you. Um, and then connect that basically to your OBS and work on your OBS. Either work on your mixer outside as a hardware, uh, uh, yes, as a hardware, or work, work on your mixer in the OBS through different channels um, with either plugins, like I mentioned before, VSTs, or uh, external pedals or effects you could also connect to your microphone. So again, I'm repeating, but... First time I went live, I used a condenser and I connected it to a um, reverb pedal and that's it. I only did an acoustic show and the reverb came from the pedal. And when I talk to people, I can close the reverb. They hear me normally and when I played the songs, I open the reverb. So um, that's about that. I'm going to move now to, um, to the last part, which is the monetization and marketing part hopefully how we can make some money then probably we'll have like 15 minutes left and i'll try to answer questions again um so regarding uh payments and and marketing and so on first of all in terms of marketing um making money from a live show could be uh, in different ways so of course you could sell tickets this is something people are talking about right now is it okay that artists are playing for free should they sell tickets um, I've seen a lot of different variations on this. I actually like all of them. I think when something is new, you should try everything and then basically stick to what you like. Um, what I've seen so far is I've mentioned before the festival in Israel. For example, they used Zoom to sell tickets. So basically they, they made an event on like Eventbrite or Eventim, which is very, very easy to make. You go on there and you create an event. You can even create it and immediately send it on Facebook and it will create a link to the event with a ticket sale in it. Super easy. Um, and they sold tickets for a very uh, small price, around about seven euros um, for a whole festival that basically broadcasted about 50 artists with two songs each. Um, for about, I don't know, I think it was like four or five hours, uh, which was pretty cool. What they did is they sold tickets to the Zoom, only to the Zoom, and in their, in their case, there were a lot of people involved, so it was easier. They could control the broadcasting. You didn't have to do it yourself. They had the sound technician helping the musicians beforehand, preparing, and so on. When you work alone, that's going to be harder to do. Uh, probably if you're doing it, you should do it only for like yourself and maybe do a setup that's a little more easy to make, like a, like an acoustic setup. Otherwise, you, you're, you're putting yourself into a lot of like possible technical difficulties, which you don't want. Um, but you then could sell the Zoom link 
And as a host, if you're hosting a Zoom and if you have a, pay, uh, a paid account where you can actually have people come in only if you invite them and have it longer than an hour and so on, uh, then you could send them the link, the people who paid. You could at the same time have something uh, that you're broadcasting at Zoom, like, like, we, like I said before, you could also broadcast it at the same time on Facebook. Um, basically just have both softwares open on your computer and broadcast to both of them. Um, but have the the thing that's happening in Zoom be more interpersonal. So basically, you sell tickets to these people because they get to, A, they get to show you them because you can see them on Zoom and you can communicate there better, maybe through signs or something like that. You can prepare in advance something that you can tell your fans, hey, if you want me to respond to you, do A, B, C, a movement or a, or something they can do easily like write or just a gesture on the screen or whatever take the time to talk to them maybe even allow them to talk back to you open the mic for some of these people so you can interact with them because the most important part for the fans right now is the interaction they don't get the interaction when we are watching a show in a club or a venue we're interacting with the other people around us. We're interacting with the band by screaming. We're interacting by jumping. We're interacting by having a beer. At home, we're not really interacting with, with uh, our, our artist, the one we're, we're watching right now. So if you want to do that, if you want to interact, that's a good option for you, for example, Zoom um, at the moment. I'm sure there's going to be more options. I'm sure Facebook will probably open up also like an option for people to opt in and opt out and stuff like that, like they did already on Instagram, basically, uh, where you can have someone join in to your broadcast. Um, so uh, that's in, ter in, term of, uh, in term of selling the tickets to, to Zoom. You can also just ask people to, s to buy it just because they're nice. So basically you say, hey, this is free. So what I call the radio head method, you say, hey, this is free. I'm going to go live. It's absolutely free. You don't need to do anything. If you want, you can buy tickets and then either make an event bright uh, or eventing uh, event where people can buy tickets. Or again, just do what, what I'm doing right here, which is have your PayPal on the screen. You don't have to have it there constantly. You take it off and on uh, basically uh, whenever, whenever you want to talk about the fact that people can give you something. Um, and you leave it as a choice for them and it's there. And when you leave the video online later, people might use it later and, and uh, support you later in that way. So these are two kind of ways of doing it for ticketing. Um, other than ticketing, um, I would uh, actually do things like merchandise. So basically just tell people, hey, uh, I'm playing this show. Everything is free. Maybe buy my CD or my vinyl or my cassette or whatever it is or, or go on Spotify and just have a little Spotify logo with your Spotify code. Let people scan it maybe. Uh, you know, you can go on Spotify, download your code there and let people scan it. Um, so that they could basically just follow you. Uh, once you get more Spotify followers, you get more plays, you get more plays, you get more money, you get more ex exposure, it's good for you. So that's another thing you could do. Um, another thing you could do is you can collaborate with uh, brands. I touched on that a little bit before. So maybe you're broadcasting from a certain city and maybe there's uh, right now, I don't know, they're, they're trying to do something and uh, you could be helpful in their effort to promote it. And basically maybe you already have enough followers on your Facebook page and you can say, hey, look, I have 2,000, 3,000, 5,000, 10,000, depends on, on how big uh, uh, of, uh, of uh, following you have. And say, hey, look, I'm gonna go live um, I will, you know, basically do a, a brand uh, in place, placement for you, either by putting it somewhere like I'm now, my brand placement is the Music Pool Berlin and the EU, um, or just by putting it like that or by mentioning it or maybe having the thing in the background. I don't know, maybe it's a, it's a beer or a Coke and you have it in the background or whatever, right? That's up to you and how much you're into the game of capitalism and how much you're into doing that kind of stuff. Again, I think you, you might be helping a, a product that you like. Uh, maybe it's a small product. It doesn't have to be Coca-Cola, right? You can help like a small cafe in your neighborhood that's right now doing deliveries and you can say hey this broadcast is together with my cafe here in my neighborhood and i want to help them as well so you know you promote them they promote you everybody helps each other and you make some kind of deal it could be a butter it could be money it could be whatever right 
it's up to you get creative and try to find partners uh in that sense so um so branding uh collaborations with other artists i think can be very cool you recommend your show they recommend your show you recommend their show um and so on so that could be very very good in tem in terms of payments and methods where you could get your money so again there's the monetization stuff on on uh, youtube and soon on facebook from a certain number of viewers but of course you can just have your paypal you can have skrill i know is a thing uh maybe in germany sometimes a little more than paypal i don't know um i don't know it depends on the country you're on basically i mean if you're if you're in sweden you'd use a swish and so every country has their thing i think in israel it's called beat and whatever you can put that on and let people just basically wire, wire you money if they want, whichever amount they want to help you. Um, or you could suggest something to give them, you know, you could sell your records uh, with a, a five euro discount or a two euro discount or a one euro discount or whatever, or just no discount and you'll personally sell, uh, you'll per personally sign different things um, that you sell on your broadcast or anything like that could possibly uh, create more money for you while you go live. Um, I'm going to go, let's see, we have only 10 minutes left. So I'm going to look at the questions here, see if I missed anything. Um, Jens Dreiser, hey, hi, Ryan, do you know if it's possible to stream an external live stream, uh, one hour TV on our Facebook page? I'm not sure what you meant, Jens, actually. Um, if you have a live stream happening through a different uh, through a different uh, hardware, like if you're doing it on TV, there is a way to route your broadcast uh, through an OBS or through a, bro a different broadcasting system to live. So yeah, you could do that. I mean, that's what TV channels are doing right now. Um, I don't. I actually haven't watched German TV, but I'm sure they've been doing that too. Uh, but I've seen that where people basically have a show in a club and then the club has their own little setup with their cameras and their sound and that goes to the TV channel, but at the same time they broadcast it uh, on Facebook. And you can do that. You could do that by using two different routers and one is routing to Facebook and one is routing to uh, the TV or just simply have two different cameras when one is broadcasting only to the TV and one is broadcasting only to the um to the Facebook, for example. So if that's what you meant, uh, please tell me if that's not what you meant and I'll try to, to give you a different answer. Um, let's see if I missed any. Uh, this one from Don Hellman, it says, any recommendation for upstream bandwidth requirements? Had a problem once with this and I read that uh, residential connections weren't, weren't designed for streaming. Um, I touched on this uh, before a little bit, Don. Uh, you're right, uh, the connections here are not so good. Obviously, if you have a lot of people are doing something at the same time, obviously if they're broadcasting or uploading or downloading, which a lot of people are doing right now, streaming Netflix in 4K or whatever, um, your bandwidth goes down because you're sharing it with a bunch of people, even if you're, even if it's your own bandwidth, because the antenna or whatever the the company is the same company for these people, and then the bandwidth uh, might get problems and and go down. You can test your speed before you go online. You simply Google test my speed or test test my uploading speed uh, on Google. It will give you an option to uh, um, to test your speed and basically tell you. Um, what it is, I would say five uh, minimum. You need five megabytes upload minimum if you want to get good results. Um, anything more than that is, is of course, great. Um, and again, if you don't use Wi-Fi, if you use a cable connection, you'll get a better, um, a better streaming connection. Um, what else? Let's see. Um, do you think audio quality is too important in this period? I am unfortunately a pr uh, perfectionist and see a lot of people just putting out music without worrying about mixing or quality and it seems that people who listen don't really care about quality. Uh, hey, Napo Voodoo Morello. Uh, thanks for the question. It's an excellent question. Uh, it raises a debate of, I think, larger um, issues, which, of course, we've been having with, you know, technology um, this kind of debate for a long time. 
whether it's uh you know cds or vinyls or if it's you know streaming or downloads and if it's mp3 or waves or if it's all these things um obviously as a musician myself and as a perfectionist myself as such, such as you um i think audio is super important i i don't go live before i feel comfortable with the audio um so i think basically you need to make sure it sounds good because even though it's it's in your home you're still doing a performance and just like you would have a performance in a club you want it to sound good i want my performance to sound good and you probably want yours to sound good um so again for this i would go back uh, and look at all the stuff uh, we talked about which is basically um going through a little mixer going through your sound card having um maybe an outboard of pedals or effects that you have if you're a musician and you're a perfectionist you probably own a reverb and a, co and a compressor and an eq and so on you could do the sound the the only thing that you can't control or it will be harder for you to control is the uh, the broadcasting quality in terms of the bandwidth and um, your internet so again It depends on where you are, different countries, different uh, companies supply different speeds and so on. If you have the option to buy a proper, you know, router that is like very, very fast, <clears throat> if you think it's worth your while and worth your money, then do that and then connect it with a cable, not via Wi-Fi, you know, have it uh, as a thing that you use for broadcasting, have a broadcasting software that works, um, maybe buy one and not use the open source one because they tend to be a little more sturdy in terms of um, disconnections and so on. And again, you can also use VSTs and plugins uh, on your OBS if you're, using, um, if you're using an interface that allows you multiple inputs and then you could have, again, different mics, different plugins, and basically you have the same work as you would have in a studio. Um, so that's, uh, I think that's, that's helpful. <laughs> um, okay, five, five more minutes, five more minutes. Um, please let me know what other things you have. I'm going to go quickly through my pages here and see that we've actually covered everything. Um, obviously, um, when you're broadcasting, uh, like the things, as, as long as you don't hear me distorting, and again, you can ask, Uh, people, hey, am I distorting right now? How's the sound? Uh, as long as you're not distorting, it's fine. Um, but you do have an indicator that can tell you uh, your level. And it's important to make sure that when you connect uh, outboard or pedals or stuff like that, that you have the same level when you talk to people without the effects and when you have the effects on so you don't jump in volumes and drive everybody crazy called they'll just leave. It's not like a club where they have to listen to the, to the technical difficulties if the sound engineer, God forbid, makes a mistake. Um, here you are your own sound engineer. So that's one thing. And the other thing is the video. You have to make sure that it's uh, uh, good. You know, if you have light coming from the back, like I do, maybe bl put your blindfolds. The best is to put something behind you if you have a little cover or something that can protect the light you see when i move around my light changes and the camera from the computer is not so good for this so in terms of video and visuals uh it's best to to do it when the light is steady also probably not during the day when the light changes and so on or if you have folds that are darker than this close them create an artificial light and then on your obs you can also control the brightness and the contrast and the gamma and so on Uh, so you can actually make a nice view. And if you want, you can get artsy with it and you can do it black and white and you can do it with different hues and so on. Um, so I think that's uh, important. Um, and then uh, the last thing is everything that has to do with delay, uh, what is called the sync uh, offset, basically. Uh, before you start, um, before you start, you should have checked uh, by recording and by doing a test run, which you can do also uh, on Facebook and so on, that allows you to do one test run where you upload a video, but it's only for you to see or the admins of your page, um, where you basically just check that there's no delay or latency between your lips and the audio. Um, I've done this earlier today. Um, if it didn't work, tell me. Uh, but basically, if it doesn't work and people tell you, oh, you're off sync, you can go then to your mixer inside your OBS and basically change the sync. It's super, super easy. Uh, normally 100 milliseconds, 
are enough to fix a problem, but somewhere between 100 and 150 milliseconds, depending on your connection and depending on the delay. Um, for example, right now I see that in the last five minutes, I've had some frames dropped. In the last two minutes, um, I had 10% drop of frames, which the OBS also tells you. So this could be that.